Welcome to another episode of the Bandage Podcast, a weekly wrap-up of the most trending healthcare news. Each week, join me and my co-host Alex Ross as we'll discuss the latest in healthcare, health IT, and compliance. In this week's episode, we cover gene-based therapy for cancer patients, new artificial intelligence to help treat diseases, and restaurants failing health inspections. Let's wrap things up. This is episode one for the week of October 7th. I'm Matt Moneypenny. And I'm Alex Ross. Before we get started, our diagnosis code for the week is W61.12XA, struck by McCaw, initial encounter. You didn't even have to tell me what that one meant, Matt. Because listen, it's happened to me. Has it? So that same Six Flags Park that I love, I was the volunteer for the bird show. And uh, basically my responsibilities that week included getting up on stage, waving to everyone and smiling, uh-huh. um, and then serving as kind of a, a perch for the macaw to fly over and land on. And that's exactly what it did. The macaw flew over, landed on me, um, and then the guy called him back, and, and the macaw took a hard left right into my ear. You had to macaw it over? Yeah. Do you remember the colored feathers of the macaw? He was blue. Oh, all blue? Well, that's what I was seeing after he hit me in the head. Oh, wow. Wow, that's <laughs> tough. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot that goes into that. I mean, Absolutely. it's definitely dangerous. Macaws are very, very violent. They're descendants of raptors, these birds. So you got to be careful. Yeah. Well, he was a big one. And uh, to make things worse, he also pooped on my shoulder. Oh, did he say anything to you while he was running into you? Because they can talk, right? Uh, sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, let's go into the news. Our first headline here is gene-based therapy can help buy time for men with advanced prostate cancer. The drug Limparza is currently used to treat patients with breast or ovarian cancer linked mutations with BRCA genes. This gene mutation can also drive cases of prostate cancer. A recent study recruited men with advanced prostate cancer who had alterations in BRCA genes to use Limparza. Results showed that compared to normal hormonal therapy, Linparza delayed half of the patient's cancer progression. The drug blocks a protein that cancer cells need to keep DNA healthy, and the cancer cells may die without the protein. Alex, this was published just in time for the end of Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, September. So they squeaked it in there right on September 30th. Yeah, I have to wonder if maybe those are related, but probably not. In terms of positive outlooks, though, it's always good to... uh, see some kind of new treatment that is proving effectiveness, especially in the realm of cancer, um, where there's just so many different variations and different genes and different structures and whatnot. And all of those um, pose a challenge to researchers. So there's another one that we've made a good step forward on. Artificial intelligence may improve understanding of Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is chronic inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract affecting around 780,000 people in just the U.S. Rutgers University researchers developed an artificial intelligence tool to discover genes linked to Crohn's and accurately predict patients with the disease. While this is not a clinical diagnosis tool, further experimentation could reveal molecular reasons behind the disease. The researchers plan to use these results to discover better treatment. You know, Alex, I think we've seen a lot more use of artificial intelligence, not only in healthcare, but just across the world. And I think it is a really good thing, obviously, but a lot of people are worried that artificial intelligence is going to take people's jobs in certain sectors. Now, obviously, this isn't the case for healthcare, but it's still mm-hmm. something to keep in mind. And it's kind of interesting. If I had to pick an industry that may provide the best kind of longevity against a, an ever AIing world, if that is even AIing, huh? a, becoming How do you more spell a, that? AI ing. <laughs> if I had to pick a, a sector, I would go with healthcare. Yeah. And really, because you can't replace human interaction in healthcare, I think there's something very significant to be said about the value of a human connection when trying to heal from some disease or or um, kind of become well again. Yeah, and the human connection is certainly important, but. I think artificial intelligence kind of opens up windows and increases the accuracy as well as the analytical data that we can use to Mm -hmm. help patients. So Mm -hmm. something interesting. I think we'll see robots coming up in both diagnosis and in some treatments. And uh, surgeries. But but there's still going to have to be that human component because humans are so incredibly unique um, and, and challenging in many respects. 
and when they're going through something as traumatic as like a surgery, yep. it's important to have that human connection as well. Mm-hmm. So that's a good point. Speaking of artificial intelligence, we also have here that it speeds up chest x-rays. New artificial intelligence called the Chexpert system is a chest x-ray system that can detect critical findings in pneumonia patients in as fast as 10 seconds. Researchers use the model to examine x-ray images at Intermountain Hospital departments in Utah. It accurately identified key findings, and its performance was comparable to radiologists. Since the systems can read the images much quicker than doctors, treatments for pneumonia patients can start sooner. I think that's true that it it could speed things up, but I think the improvement's probably marginal. There we go. We're just you know knocking people off. We can just replace them with robots. Replacing them <laughs> with robots. I think the main thing to take away from that whole ideology that artificial intelligence is going to replace humans is arbitrary. I think it's more like we've never really experienced a world where we don't work that nine to five day. We don't work that eight to six day. And I don't feel like a lot of people aren't going to know what to do with themselves after that. Well, if that does happen. Certainly some jobs can be replaced by robots and others cannot, but still as jobs kind of move in a different direction, it kind of creates a new subset of of careers. You know, instead of having jobs putting the nail into the board, now we have jobs building the robots that put that nail in, in the board. We have jobs fixing that robot. We have jobs running and programming that robot. So it's really just a, a shift in you know, what types of jobs are available, and I think that's okay. Yeah, and that's, that's not new, right? especially, you know, you think about the Industrial Revolution or the creation of things like the assembly line. It made us more efficient. It allowed us to do more things with less people. And did that take away the jobs of people? Yeah, sure, sure it did. But what it did is allowed us to expand into other things like technology and advancement. And I think in the long run, that's okay. Yeah, I <laughs> you know, agree. Relax. It's all right. <laughs> um, and in the case of medical technologies, I'm hopeful that it will make us more accurate and better at providing treatment. And it's going to free up kind of the, the people resources, this limited resource that is people to move in other directions and better society as a whole. Next up, clean eating has a new meaning. Don't eat in dirty restaurants. Recently, some notable restaurants have failed health inspections. California Pizza Kitchen in Sacramento failed its health inspection after roaches, both dead and alive, were found in the restaurant. Food was also being stored in improper temperatures. Along with that, 17 restaurants failed health inspections around the valley in Phoenix in just the past month. A food court in New York failed for flies and improperly refrigerated food. 12 Kansas City restaurants were cited for seven or more health code violations. And the list goes on. Pennsylvania has made the effort to educate the public on restaurants' health inspections with the Eat Safe PA app for iPhone and Android. Consumers can search restaurants by location for their inspection reports, including violations and inspector comments. Yeah, I think one of the things that I kind of like about certain states, what they do is they actually give restaurants and they post it on the very front of the door that says a grade based upon their cleanliness. Mm -hmm. And I think California might be one of those. I think it's a good thing because it encourages, um, obviously, restaurants to be cleaner by giving them an actual letter grade. If you get a bad grade, then people probably won't go to your business. So it's kind of a little bit of a monetary Mm -hmm. um, encouragement for those restaurants. And I think this type of app would be really helpful too. Um, but I think it'd be more helpful if it was integrated with something that was a little bit more popular, like Yelp. And maybe that's something that's coming down the line. Um, but I think that's a that's an area where something like a Yelp or Google reviews or something like that could get a lot of benefit sure. from. Sure. Because the last thing I want is to bite into a burger and then see a roach like by my feet. Like that would be disgusting. Yeah, I'm thankful that nothing like that has ever happened to me. I know the state of Ohio, at least where we are, they publish their health results online. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a, a clunky list that's hard to get to, but they list kind of everyone who had major infractions and what kind of infractions so that you know. Um, I know last time they published this list, it forced me to find a couple new restaurants to eat at because uh, there were some that were like appearing on the list for the sixth time in a row. They're like, ah, probably don't want to uh-huh. eat there anymore. Six time <laughs> dirty restaurant <laughs> champion. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just a, a contest who can keep up their streak the longest. Yeah, exactly. And that's not what we want. Yeah, definitely not something to be proud of. With that, let's get into our next segment. 
B R E A C H. Breach Patrol. It's a breach! All of the latest cybersecurity breaches. Welcome to Breach Patrol, where we're going to talk about all of the cybersecurity breaches across the world. Um, our first breach here is Alabama hospitals held for ransom by hackers. Three Alabama DCH health system hospitals had to turn away new patients after a ransomware attack, which limited use of their computer systems. The hospitals are only caring for currently admitted patients, and ambulances must take other patients to different hospitals. The hackers are demanding an, quote, as yet unknown payment, according to this source. Alex, ransomware attacks are huge in the healthcare industry right now. Yeah, unfortunately, that's going to be an expensive one, whether they decide to pay the ransom or decide to, you know, bring in some outside forces to take care of the issue. It's going to cause them a lot of, of issues, something that healthcare systems have kind of taken lightly in recent years is cybersecurity. And so we keep seeing these kind of ransomware attacks, which literally shut down this entire hospital. Um, and prevents them from doing their jobs in in saving people's lives, helping people because of of this attack. So, you know, you may think of compliance or security as those kind of things like, yes, I, I need to do this to run a good business. But no, you need to do this to serve your patients. And, and isn't that what we're we're going for when we start things like a hospital right. or a medical clinic? And it's not even like you said, it would be costly to this hospital. It's not even a monetary. I mean, the monetary value is there, but there's also that life value, right? Like every second at a hospital counts and any second that this hacker can take away from a hospital in their mind will make sure that they get that ransom paid Mm -hmm. because there's lives on the line. And the fact that they have to turn away ambulances is not good because, I mean, if they're in a certain area, right, and there's an issue where they need an ambulance, maybe the next hospital is 30 minutes, 40 minutes away. And by that Mm -hmm. time, I mean, something bad could really happen and they sure. need that medical treatment as soon as possible so it's it's kind of why ransomware is so hot in healthcare is because mm-hmm. hackers see that value that these hospitals are losing i mean mm-hmm. it's it's lives on the line yeah luckily it, it didn't seem to be too rural of a hospital in this case but i know that there are a lot of hospitals uh for example critical access hospitals that to be designated that they have to be a certain distance away from the next nearest hospital and so if, if one of those hospitals went down that extra distance could literally mean the difference between life and death. Oh, yeah. And and unfortunately, that creates a huge kind of value for the hospital to pay a ransom like that. So take your cybersecurity seriously because you need to take patient health seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, breaking the bank or breaking into the bank. Millions of customers' personal details may have been leaked in what could be the largest Russian banking data breach. Information related to 60 million Spurbank credit card holders were found on the black market. At least 200 clients' data was confirmed leaked, but Spurbank said their funds were not at risk. The database is impossible to externally hack since it's isolated from the external network, so the most likely cause was intentional criminal action of an employee. Yeah, so banking records on the dark web is... I mean, you can actually get them for pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. If you get PHI in the dark web, it's 100 times the amount of a credit card number. The reason why PHI is so much more expensive than credit card um, is because it takes much longer for healthcare companies to realize that they were breached in the first place. So hackers can do a lot more with the data that they're purchasing for a longer period of time. Whereas with credit cards, they usually realize that they were breached almost instantaneously. Mm-hmm. I also think it's interesting here that the database is isolated from an external network, which makes sense from a security standpoint. But you got to make sure that you're training your employees that they know what they're doing is wrong, right? Hackers will go to employees and offer them money for their passwords. And it's pretty crazy that a lot of employees are willing to do that because they don't care if they're making a quick buck. Why why would they care, right? It's going to be hard for them to figure out which employee was given money from a hacker to Mm -hmm. go into that database. And that's why we have a lot of compliance rules that may seem silly, but a lot of it is about tying it back to individual people so that they have that, you know, responsibility to their duties. And we have the ability to catch something like this that happens and kind of figure out how it happened, where it happened, and with whom it happened. Right. With that, our next headline here is, Words with friends loses friends over data breach. A prolific hacker reported that he was able to access data of all players who had installed the game Words with Friends on iOS and Android, amounting to 218 million users. 
The parent company, Zynga, does not believe any financial information was accessed and said that they will notify users as the investigation continues. This is a pretty hot topic right now. And if you are curious, breach in Words with Friends is 14 points, Alex. Wow. 14 points, 218 million users. I myself have played Words with Friends. And though I'm not very good at it, this is still kind of scary. Yeah, to kind of put it in perspective, 218 million users is like two-thirds of the population of the entire United States. Perfect. So, you know, every single person in all the major cities. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a lot of people yeah. and a lot of concerning, um, especially for Zynga, which is not a, it's not a small company. No. It's not a new kind of gaming company. It's a huge company. It's been around since the days of MySpace producing online games that people have been playing, and they still are falling victim to a breach like this. That's that's scary. Yeah. <laughs> if if I didn't say it enough before, you got to take security seriously because Zynga is getting hacked. I yeah. mean, come on. <laughs> what what are you going to get? Whether or not I got the high score last week? It's true. Maybe. That's also something to keep in mind, though, is when you're downloading these apps, a lot of times what they do these days is they require you to make an account. And the reason why they make you make this account is to get some of your data because it's so important to them and they can market to you and make more money off of you. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're entering data into new applications. I mean, obviously, Zynga is a little bit more of a, a reputable company because they've been around for a while, but maybe they're not not much of a reputable company mm-hmm. anymore because of this big breach. Maybe they just got lucky this far because people weren't considering my weekly login statistics as something that that they wanted to hack yeah Um, and it could be something where it's like this prolific hacker is i mean he might be prolific but he might be just doing this as a white hack ethical thing which i doubt it kind of sounded like just the way the story was written you know he's he said that he was able to access all players and and the hacker reported it that's that's kind of the verbiage that's got me maybe he did you know bill gates his first job came because he hacked into a computer system. Yeah, there's a lot of money in that. they hired him to repeatedly hack their system so that they could continue to improve it. So, you know, maybe maybe it's one of those guys who's just hacking things to help people out. So if you get hacked by him, maybe you should be thankful in that case. Yeah, right. But it that, that's like best case scenario. Time. Really, don't let it happen. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, maybe white hat hacking has some market in healthcare. I think at some point, hackers might be hired by big hospital systems to be like, okay, let's see if you can breach this. I don't know how that would work with HIPAA involved with all the red tape, but it would be definitely interesting. I would assume it works with any other vendor. You sign a BAA together that you're doing some kind of service for the betterment of the hospital as a whole. And so therefore you could be covered under that BAA to CPHI. And through that agreement, it allows you to then hack things with permission, of course, and then accidentally CPHI. But, you know, that's kind of the extent of it. Right. With that business agreement, that kind of you know helps keep things on the up and up. So maybe that is a service to look into hiring people or, or hackers or organizations to hack your systems and see what they can come up with. Yeah, I agree. Unfortunately, there's a lot more money to be made by being a good hacker doing bad things. It's true. Than being a good hacker doing good things. So. Yeah, it's all that's that ethical thing. It's if you want to be a criminal, then you can make a lot of money. But I mean, you could go to jail. If I could hack, I would be an ethical hacker. Of course, of course. <laughs> Who would? Next up, Yelp. More like help. We're being fined by the OCR. OCR's investigation found that a dental practice, Elite Dental Associates had impermissibly disclosed the protected health information, or PHI, of multiple patients in response to reviews on their page on Yelp. In addition to paying the $10,000 fine, the dental practice, which provides general, implant, and cosmetic dentistry, agreed to adopt a correction action plan that includes two years of monitoring by OCR for compliance with HIPAA rules. I'm interested in what these reviews were because I can imagine a patient being like, hey, this guy's customer service is bad. And the dentist is like, yeah, well, your cavity was disgusting. So <laughs> maybe you should fix that. I feel like it was a little more tame than that. <laughs> maybe and, not, though. And he, this just kind of illustrates the importance of of teaching HIPAA rules to your employees, because what I feel like was happening is a biller or or someone was just scrolling through these Yelp reviews and someone was like, hey, I went in for this service. They overcharged me. I'm angry, that kind of stuff. And this biller was just like, no, you didn't. You came in for this other service. We charged you this amount of dollars, which is the normal amount. 
And then they got fined for it because, of course, you can't go publicizing that kind of information. It's one thing to respond to Yelp reviews and say, like, hey, you know, this is good customer service if I respond back and I'm I'm friendly about it. But that's another thing to respond back and also breach your patience, right? (laughs) I mean, that's kind of insane. But I also think that a $10,000 fine really isn't that much for something like this. I mean, I think there needs to be a little bit more of a precedent set, especially since this is kind of like a social media, like Yelp isn't a direct social media, but it still kind of is to a certain extent. Yeah, I I think the fine was probably based on the idea that this wasn't a willing breach. It wasn't a purposeful, like, I'm going to take PHI or use it inappropriately, knowing that it was inappropriate. And so, therefore, it was kind of like an accidental, like, oops, didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that. So they had to give him a fine because that's the punishment. But I, I don't necessarily think it should be stiffer just because I don't necessarily think that they meant to breach people's personal information. Right. And I think, I mean, if it was the case where the patient, the person who's reviewing it actually did come and it was a real review and they said, hey, I came in for a cavity, since they willingly gave away their quote unquote PHI right there because that is a procedure and that is protected. At that point, the doctor still needs to make sure that they're not responding back with additional like cavity. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, well, I'm glad I gave you that crown mold. You know what I mean? Because that is a breach. So. Well, maybe um, you should start brushing your teeth more. Yeah. You cavity ridden so and so. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> definitely, definitely a wild predicament that this dentist's yep. place was put into. I kind of like that story uh, from a humorous standpoint, though, because it's a lot less serious than someone hacked into our yeah, system. Yeah, it's no ransomware. You know, major issue. This is kind of like, oh my goodness, look at what these people did. Yeah. Don't do this. Yeah. Do not put this online. Definitely a facepalm moment. That's all for this week's weekly wrap-up of Trending Healthcare News. I'm Alex Ross. And I'm Matt Moneypenny. We'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of The Bandage. This week's episode was written and produced by eTactics. eTactics is a leading revenue cycle solutions organization committed to providing innovative, web-based solutions that improve our clients' cash management and customer relationships. Thanks, and we'll see you next